I think my first recollections of uh, the bomber jacket and flight jacket, uh, being a child of the 80s, is probably Top Gun, I have to say. Um, obviously, the leather, like G1 um, jackets that they have in that are kind of quite famous. The other link for me as well is that throughout my childhood, I went to a lot of kind of military fairs and things as well. So sort of always around um, different military garments and specifically, yeah, the bomber jackets. I think what's so enduring about the bomber jacket is um, really its history. You know, it goes all the way back to the First World War where sort of the early experimenters with flight were, were needing something very, very warm. And the way that it developed as well, just from even having the rib at the cuff and then at the hem and the way it developed then throughout the 20s, 30s and into the Second World War as planes continue to go higher and higher. You know, it's really about the function and, and I think the wearability of the garment and the fact that throughout those times as well, the, the fabrics it's been made from, whether it be wool or then into shearling leathers and things as well, has developed with it. And then what's quite nice is it's, it's quite an interesting garment because it's, it's a barometer really of the development of fabric as well. If we look then to the 70s and 80s where the MA1 came in, where well, you're dealing then with synthetic fabrics, the, the sort of iconic uh, olive and, and orange mix as well that everyone knows now. And then with it has come actually the, the people that are wearing it. And so, of course, early on it was all about pilots, but then it's been adopted by different people, whether it be through from punks, mods, etc. And so I think it's a really interesting garment that's developed as we have, you know, so I think that's why why it's worked for so long. So for Mr. Porter, in fact, I've designed three uh, exclusive styles. Of course, they're all bomber jackets. And what I'm really proud of is that they really talk about the three different tiers of my own business. So the first one is our remade jacket. We work a lot with deconstructed and reworked original military fabrics. And the piece that um, I'm talking about now is our remade bomber jacket. So in fact, the top layer is um, it's a reused Italian um, breathable fabric. And then the bottom layer, seam sealed, in fact, and the bottom layer then is a bivouac um, sleeping bag that we deconstruct, completely rework. So that's an original breathable showerproof fabric as well. And what's so great about all of those pieces, when you look inside, they're individually numbered. We only ever make a maximum of 50 pieces worldwide, and they'll all have the labeling remade in England because we're reusing and, and deconstructing original fabrics to, to remake them into the new piece. The second one um, is our gray wool bomber jacket, and the fabric there is actually Hainsworth wool, and Hainsworth are up in uh, West Yorkshire. They do all of the ceremonial cloth for the military, so the red that you'll see at Buckingham Palace, that's their red. And in fact, what we've done for Mr. Porter is um, develop, again, an exclusive style where we have the grey um, Melton wool, really, really good quality. And yeah, and then you'll see our signature grey grain detailing as well throughout the jacket. So the third piece that you'll see is our lightweight bomber jacket. And that's been constructed from a Japanese recycled fabric. And when you look closely at the detailing, you'll see a lot of the um, original parachute seaming. So what we've actually done is first produce one garment, which we make from original parachute, and then we replicate it in the Japanese fibre. So again, I'd like to think that across those three pieces, you kind of see the different tiers of my business. And again, what makes us hopefully a little bit unique.